five years ago, if you told me that I would rather watch a movie from Illumination, the company that made the Minions, or a movie from DreamWorks, the company that made Shark Tale, over a Disney movie, which does include both Marvel and Star Wars, I would ask you who your dealer was, cause that sounds like some good stuff you're smoking. But with the release of Puss in Boots 2, I don't know what it is with DreamWorks and just making really good sequels. They did it with Shrek, Kung Fu Panda, How to Train Your Dragon, and now this. DreamWorks, maybe you should make a Shark Tale 2. The sequel might actually be amazing. 2 really does seem to be your lucky number. Now the Mario movie isn't anything amazing. Sure, it was a surprisingly decent film, but for as much praise as it's getting now, I think we forgot how we all started screaming when we heard the announcement that Illumination was making it, and that Chris Pratt was voicing Mario. Let's not forget about all those rumors we heard about Peach being a girl boss. Even the trailer seemed to confirm that. But luckily for us, Nintendo got involved and shut down most of that shit. I heard some rumors that Peach was going to save Mario and Luigi at the end with what was basically an Iron Man suit. Now granted, in this movie, Peach isn't a damsel in distress. And I personally think that she really walks the line of being a strong woman who can automatically do anything a man can do, but better. Just like Rey, Mulan, Captain Marvel, and more. Well, it's true that she's not actually saved in the movie, because no modern movie can ever have a woman <laughs> saved by a man. Not even the biggest damsel in distress in all of history. At the very least, it's made clear that she can't beat Bowser on her own. Who, by the way, still really wants to get with her just as much as I want to get with your hot dad. <laughs> it's amazing that they can tell a coherent story while also making so many references to the games. I could I couldn't believe my eyes. A company was using a famous IP and made a movie that the fans actually enjoyed. What? I would highly recommend bringing your kids to it, and you'll get some enjoyment out of it as well. But it's not a movie that we'll be hyper-analyzing for the next decade. Except for, well, this one scene. There's a giant bullet bill chasing Mario to a portal that leads back to Brooklyn. At first I thought this was going into the direction of Mario for some stupid reason on purposely destroying the gateway home, trapping himself forever in the Mushroom Kingdom. But instead it creates this weird riff which causes a whole bunch of things from the Mushroom Kingdom to teleport to Brooklyn. But I don't know how Mario could have possibly known that and if this missile went through the portal and landed in Brooklyn, was Mario trying to nuke his own home city? Collapsing the entire economy of Earth in the process? I can't wait for MatPat to do a film theory of this movie, talking about how Mario was actually the secret villain all along. As for Puss in Boots 2, good god where to start? It was maturely handling adult themes such as anxiety and fear of death, along with regrets of life choices. It's a pretty deep film despite being called Puss in Boots 2. And it has one of the most threatening villains we've gotten in recent years. That's right, it's Jack Horner! I'm just kidding, it's death. I honestly thought for the longest time if you used the living embodiment of death as a villain, it was honestly pretty cringe and try hard. But they actually managed to pull it off in a really epic way. And Jack Horner was an absolutely despicable person. Evil just for the sake of being evil. I feel like we haven't gotten one of those in a very long time. And best of all, they didn't make him say any incel talking points. Looking at you, Skeletor from Masters of the Universe. It also had a strong female character, such as Kitty Softpaws and Goldilocks, that weren't stupidly annoying and overpowered. It's pretty amazing that can be done in the modern era. But you already know all the reasons why Mario is a good movie, and why Puss in Boots 2 The Last Wish is a legendary movie that will go down in history. So now I must turn and ask the mouse himself. Mickey. Why can't you make anything close to as good as the Mario movie? Let me remind you, it was created by the studio that made the goddamn Minions movie. Disney seems to be in this weird state where they're attempting to please everyone, but they end up pleasing, well, no one. Sure, most of their modern movies are still successful. It's almost impossible to not have a success on your hands when you have so many of the biggest IPs at your disposal. 
<laughs> but Disney is still somehow pulling it off. Like, here's how Disney would have made the Mario movie. First, there would be an article about how Luigi is the 18th first gay character in a Disney movie ever. With his one gay scene just being him briefly holding hands with Jumpman, Mario's boss. And of course, it would be quickly edited out of the Chinese version. They would have a race-bent black character, possibly a toad, who would be very small on the poster and completely taken out of the Chinese version. They would build him up in the trailer like he was going to do something badass, only for him to be comedic relief for most of the film, just like Finn from Star Wars. Mario and Luigi's main role would be to assure the princess just how amazing she truly is. And Bowser would probably make either incel talking points or maybe capitalist talking points. I'm joking, of course, he would do both. I never understood why we had to be preached to about the evils of capitalism from one of the biggest companies in the world. And of course, several characters would be set up for spin-off movies. From Donkey Kong to Yoshi, to Birdo, to Piranha Plant, to a Goomba and a Koopa Troopa. The Goomba and the Koopa Troopa movie would be made into a TV show on Disney Plus with very little involvement from the big wigs at Disney. It would be the only one that the fans actually enjoy. And then the big wigs at Disney would get involved and ruin it, just like they did with Mandalorian. And of course, the actress who voiced Princess Peach would scream at people on Twitter about how they all didn't like the movie because they're sexist. As for what Disney would do to Puss in Boots 2, wow, there's not enough hours in the day to go over how they would ruin it. I'll just keep it short and say, they would have to make a completely different movie. Disney, you can't keep putting in strong female characters alongside minority characters and strong LGBT representation without scaring away conservative right-leaning families from watching your movies. Then immediately afterwards, bend the knee to China, putting in barely, if any, LGBT representation into your movie and making your minority characters, well, comic relief, which will scare progressive left-leaning families away from seeing your movies. It's also not very helpful for you when you talk about how evil capitalism is, when you're also one of the most evil capitalist businesses in the world. We do truly live in strange times, where people would rather watch a movie created by a studio that made the Minions over a Marvel or Star Wars movie, or any movie made by Disney in general. I wanna make it clear, there's nothing wrong with adding representation for different groups in your movies, but when you clumsily force it in and preach to your audience who are just trying to enjoy a movie, then that's bad. Disney has been on top for a few decades now, but they have been slowly losing influence over the last couple of years. Being warned by lots of people, including me, that this would happen. Even a company as powerful as Disney isn't immune to get woke, go broke. Mickey, I know you love Minnie, but you gotta stop listening to her, man. You're going to lose your company. Okay, obviously the Disney company is still going to be around. They've gotten themselves in hot water before this. But with how things are going, they're not going to be the top studio for much longer. By the way, I know I haven't uploaded in quite a while. Well, that's because I was working on a collab with Shady Do-Rags. It just went up. It's a debunk video on Cosmo Knot's She-Hulk video. So if this video wasn't enough to satisfy you with how long I've been gone, go check it out. Now I would like to give a quick shout out to the editor of this video, Doodle Tones. She did an amazing job with the editing. Like, wow, this might be one of my best edited videos yet. And she did it right after editing a video that was nine and a half hours long. So the video is over now. If you just came for the video, then you can leave. But if you're a subscriber of mine, just stay for a little bit longer. I now have a lot more free time on my hands so I can start really pumping out content, but not just on this channel, but the other two as well. For the old just a robot channel, I have a political video that's still in the works. It's about the politics in Legend of Korra, and it's definitely gonna be over an hour long. And as for the channel Fast Fictional Fights, unfortunately the next video won't be Azra vs Kratos just yet. I wanna upload a generic power scaling video first. The recording is already done, it's over half an hour long, and it's power scaling all of the main characters from the hand-drawn Disney movies. Can the Firefly from Princess and the Frog beat Omni-Man? 
Or can Peter Pan outrun anyone from Dragon Ball? Well, when the video releases, you'll see. For this channel, I have a video that hopefully will be out next week. I'm still fixing a few minor things, but it should come out to be over an hour and a half. I got even more long videos that I've been working on that will come out shortly after that one. I'm gonna start bringing on more and more editors, but unfortunately, that can be quite expensive. So I decided it was time to finally revamp my Patreon. If you can find it in your heart to give me money, I would be most grateful. Just a dollar, you will be featured in the credits. Two dollars is just a feature. I will also thank you in the pinned comment as well. For five dollars, just a privilege, where you'll get a link to my videos one day before they release. For $10, you'll get just a personalized message. Basically, at the end of each video, I will give you a personalized message, which is either a sentence or two long. Basically, if you want me to say you have more lives than Puss in Boots, and more money than Jack Horner, or that you're more beautiful than Peach, with better skills at plumbing than Mario, or something embarrassing like the person who got jarred to like the Star Wars sequel movies, I'll totally do it. And finally, for $20, just a creator. If you want to give me some lines to record for your video, I'll do that for you. Conditions apply of course, but it doesn't have to be for a video. And if you don't have a Patreon or you don't like to use it, I will be coming up with other methods for you to give me your hard earned money. And of course, as time goes on, I'll be adding new tiers to the Patreon, but I think this is a good starting point. I think there's also a way you can like donate through a comment or something. Anyways, I'm gonna go head over to Shady's channel. I've been waiting to see the She-Hulk video for like six months now. See you guys over there.